What's up, music teachers? Just wanted to come on here and be able to share you a really quick lesson, something that has been working with me um, and for my teachers, uh, specifically with content creation and making it easy and also making it fun. Probably because of the title of this is probably gonna be like, I'm gonna make content creation fun for online music teachers again. I wanna explain to you how I'm going to be doing that and what you can be looking forward to my content, especially if you're following my profile. So let's go ahead and dive into this and really talk about like, why why i'm even talking about this in the first place right so with with being able to get more students right we got to post on social media we got to put ourselves out there and with a lot of teachers what i find is that most of them when they put themselves out there online they just look like every other music teacher out there right so many people are just putting like putting out little online flyers being like hey here are my prices here are my degrees um dm me for lessons or something like that dm me for the pricing and then they and then they always wonder like why they're getting crickets on their posts right it's because it nobody wants to respond to that um but also we're in the new age right now where content creation is evolving it's evolving into a new place um and the old way of doing things isn't going to work anymore because what i used to think when i first started this um, this business, and especially with my piano studio as well, I had this whole, like my, like I had this whole limiting belief that I felt like I needed to separate my business life and my personal life. Like I always felt really uncomfortable, like sharing the things that I was doing outside of work. Um, and I, I, I really feel like insecure about that. So I don't know. Let me know if you felt that way too, or if you feel that way in the comments. Um, but also another mistake that I made was just trying to make every content like perfect. Like I always felt like I needed to plan everything like that. And I ended up spending like hours and hours trying to make the content perfect before I started posting it out. But what ends up happening is that like, I'm not consistent with my content and, and I don't put anything out there. Right. But the most important, like the biggest problem that I went through was just feeling really insecure, nervous about how people will respond to me, which is, if you're feeling that way too, I just want to let you know, like, that's a totally normal feeling. And you know, it's always nerve wracking to put yourself out there and be vulnerable. But that's also one of the things that I've learned that we have to get through. We have to go through that problem in order to make the impact that we want. All right. There's a quote from, um, I don't know if you guys like follow him too, but his name is Alex Tomozzi. He's like a, he's like an online coach. Um, he had a quote from one of his videos that was like, if, like when he started getting really big on YouTube and stuff like that, he started getting more fame. Like he already had the money, but now he's getting more fame. And with the fame comes like haters, right? But what he said to block out the haters and what helped, what's helped him like just keep moving forward with, um, with social media and getting bigger on that is that he said, if that's the sacrifice I have to make to make the impact that I want, you know, I'll take that every time. Right. And that's the thing that has, that I've taken out from that is going to help me put more of myself out there and uh, get through this feeling of insecurity is that if people are going to judge me from what I post out there and from being myself. And if that's the sacrifice I have to make in order to make the impact that I want in order to reach the people that I want to help, you know, I'll take that any day, any day as well. And I think you should take that mindset as well going like, Hey, if people, if putting myself out there is a sacrifice I have to make, in order to impact more students in this world, you know, consider that as a, as a sacrifice to make. And uh, overall, what I want to teach here is the new way of creating content. And it's really, really comes down to creating a personal brand. And that's something that I've been really focusing on for myself as well. And where you'll see my content evolving is that I, I don't want to just post content. I don't want to be just a, a content creator, but I want to be able to create a personal brand for myself. And that is really where like the long-term wealth and the long-term growth is going to happen. And I want to show you this, share, share with you the shortcuts on how you can start doing this as well. So it doesn't take you like years for me. Like it took me like over a couple of years for me to realize this right now with running this business. Um, but I want you to be able to apply this as well for yourself. So let's go ahead and break down on like what it's going to take, especially for me to create a personal brand and how you can do that as well. I'm going to share with you pretty much the biggest lessons that I've learned from my coach and what he's been teaching me so that, you know, you can be able to apply it as well. So as we're going through this, if you've got any questions, just type it in the comments. 
Uh, if you got any big takeaways, let me know too, so that you can share that with other teachers um, and, and let them know that this is something that resonated with you. So the, 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 the two criteria I want to share with you here, that's going to help you get a really good idea on where to start. Because if I keep, <laughs> if I keep blabbering on about content creation, I feel like I could do it forever. Um, so I'm going to give you a snippet on, on like the biggest lessons that I've been teaching my teachers and what I've learned from myself as well. So when we're thinking about what kinds of content to create, we have to really think about what are the two criteria that students look for when they're looking for a teacher, right? So one, can this teacher help me? So go ahead and write that down. Can this teacher help me? And then two, do I want to work with this teacher, right? Or uh, other than that, like, do I like them? Right? And that those are two, those are like the two main criteria that your students are going to look for when they're choosing a teacher, when they're choosing who the best fit for them is. So your content needs to answer those questions before they even get on a call with you. So let's go ahead and break that down. Like what kinds of content are going to answer those two questions and fit those two criteria, so that when students approach you, they've already had those two questions answered and they're pretty much like pre-sold. So the first one, like, can this teacher help me? And that, that one really comes with sharing your beliefs. And if you watch my other transformational content videos, you probably know that I, I talk a lot about like sharing your beliefs in your content. So what does that mean? That's like sharing, um, like sharing your polarizing opinions, right? And that's a big thing. Share, sharing not just your beliefs, but your beliefs have got to be polarizing. And when I talk about polarizing, what I mean is that like think of like the two spectrums of a like two, of two opinions. You want to choose one side and just stake your claim there, right? If you're going to make an opinion, be confident with it, be certain about it. And if you take, take a look at some of my content, I've been posting more polarizing beliefs, and that has actually gotten me a lot more engagement than I've ever seen before. And that just tells me that, that that's working because the key here is that when you start posting your polarizing beliefs, you're not only going to attract the students that believe in that same thing, but you're going to repel the people that you're never going to want to work with anyway. Right. And that's just going to save you so much more time and energy being able to do that. So as you're looking at the content you're already creating, make sure, am I posting around about my beliefs and am I actually making it polarizing as well? Because if we're kind of in the middle, people aren't really going to be sure of where we where we stand. Um, also with that, too, like some contents that can help with uh, answering the question, can this teacher help me is like trainings, resources, things like that, things that you can give for free um, to your students. And the biggest question I get with that too is like, what what do I give out? What do I give out for free? What do I give out for paid? Um, <laughs> and here's a simple answer. I'm just going to give you the straight answer and the fastest way to create awesome trainings. It's just give everything that you have, right? So, you know, I, at a certain point, like, you know, you don't want to just give away everything, but make your content and your trainings and your resources so good that you could give it to your paying student and they would get value out of it. So that's why like, that's why like every single training that you see in this group, is super, super, I feel like it's super, super valuable because I would give this to paying clients like any day and they would get a lot of value out of it. So don't hold back on the content. I have another like training all on like, do I, how do I give my, all of my secrets away and still be able to get clients and students from it? I have that all. So just let me know if you want that in the comments, I can be able to link that to you. Um, but the main lesson with that, make your trainings as valuable as possible. Don't hold anything back because at the end of the day, if people are getting results with your free content, they're going to be left wondering, man, what, what is Ben, what does Ben's paid content look like? It's like, dang, it's like, this is already good. Like how good can it get? Um, and trust me, it gets better. <laughs> so, uh, so that's the trainings part, right? And then the last part is social proof, right? So screenshots. Write out case studies, write out stories about what's happening with your, with your students. What are the wins that they're having as well? All of that is going to contribute with helping your potential students answer the question, can the teacher help me? Right? You don't need to talk about your degrees. You don't need to talk about like all the awesome things that you've done, but really talk about your beliefs. What do you stand for? What do you stand against? Give out value, trainings, resources, things that your students can, that your potential students can take and be able to actually experience your teaching and see that it actually works, but also social proof. Like you got to show people that not only have you done it for yourself, 
that you can be able to help other people do that too. Because like how many, how many times, let me know if uh, in the comments, if you ever had like a professor or like had a teacher who's like really, really smart, but like they, they couldn't teach for anything. Like that was me. Like I had a, I'm not going to call any names, but <laughs> I had a music theory teacher that he's a smart dude. He got like a lot of degrees. He's tenured at the school, which might have not been a good idea too, but he's, he was my teacher. He was my music theory teacher for two semesters. And I did not like the class because he was a nice dude, smart dude. He couldn't teach for Jack, like anything. <laughs> he, he couldn't teach. He didn't know how to teach. And I was just like struggling in that class. Um, and I didn't realize how not good of a teacher he was until I had a good music theory teacher. And uh, I can't say I got an A in that class. And I was really proud of myself. Um, but the the point is, is that like, you can be a great music. There's great musicians out there, but not every great musician can be a great teacher like you. So make sure that you show people that you're not just a great musician, but you're a great teacher. You can be able to share that knowledge with someone a lot easier. So that's the first part of like, can this teacher help me? Right. But the next part is something that I personally was missing in my marketing that I'm trying to add in more and more. So I want you all to be on the lookout for that and see how I'm applying this into my content as well. But it's like, do I want to work with this teacher too? And pretty much like the question is, do I like them? Right. They got to, you got to get your potential students to like you, not on, not just on a business and a teacher level, but on a personal level as well. So what, do, what, what am I going to do to be able to do that? Well, I'm going to share more about my, my personal life, right? Who am I outside of just the business, right? Yeah. Like I, like this is something, um, this is something where I'm like personally like nervous about as well. Like I have my own insecurity about putting myself out there. Um, but as of filming this right here, if you go, if you go to my profile, you can see all the adventures that I'm doing, right? I just went to Coachella, had the best weekend of my life. Got to see my favorite artists. Um, <laughs> I can't, I can't talk, stop like talking about it with my friends too. Uh, but those are the things that like that I post on my Instagram that I need to post on my Facebook more. And like, it's funny because my coach, he follows me on Instagram and uh, I posted, I posted like all these pictures for me at Coachella. And then he was like, he DM me, he was like, um, He's like Ben. I need to see this <laughs> more. Let me let me see if I can actually actually find it. It's pretty it's pretty funny. Um, but those are the things that like I need to share more of. Like I posted this. I don't know if you can see it. Like I posted this. I don't know if it's flipped already. But he was like, "Your marketing needs to have more of this, Ben." <laughs> and I was like, "Yes, said, yes, I'll post that." So I posted that on my Facebook, and um, and like all of that, like I'm gonna start consistently doing more of so that you not only get to see me and my expertise, but me and my life. And that if you want, if you want to work with me, someone who goes on adventures, has fun, um, spends his off time, like producing music, then, you know, then that's, uh, then that's awesome. I want to work with you too. But if you don't like any of that, if you don't like someone who goes on, goes to festivals, who makes music on the side, who has a lot of adventures on their free time, then that's totally cool. I probably won't want to work with you either. Right. But that's the key. And that's the thing that I've learned how to get past that insecurity is that there's always going to be people that don't like you no matter what, like just, they just don't like you. Right. And you can't control that. And what, what do we have to do in life? We can only control the things we, we should only focus on the things that we can control. So what I can control is what I'm putting out there. Right. What I can't control is how people are reacting to me and understanding that that has completely wiped away. Like most of the insecurities that I have, that I have around content creation so that I feel comfortable about putting myself out there. Because at the end of the day, like I just want to be the person that practices what I preach, right? Like one of the main reasons why, um, why we're, I'm helping teachers is because a lot of these teachers, they have like super busy lives with super busy, like teaching schedules. They don't even have time to like focus on their own music and their own passions. Right. And who am I to preach that type of lifestyle if I'm not doing it myself? So that's why this year, really focused on dedicating my free time to exploring my passions, actually putting time into that too. And I can happily say that like now it's, 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 it's translated into the business because now that, now that I've had time to like produce music, play the drums, play the piano, I come into work a lot happier. And my clients feel that they feel that energy um, and they show up better as well. And if you're able to do that for your students, they're going to find that like, exact type of transformation for not only yourself but for your students as well so be someone 
that people want to work with, right? Not just as a teacher, but as a person. And uh, the biggest, the, the last example I can give here is that, you know, that that's exactly like the whole marketing world. It's going to, it's going to the, to the, to the image of like YouTubers and content creators, right? Because the reason why they're so successful is because they do exactly like the second thing, right? They, they, they get people, they get their audience to get to know them and to actually like them. How? By sharing more of that, about their personal life. That's why vloggers do so well in YouTube. So, you know, we, I'm not saying like vlog every day or anything like that, but again, answer the questions. Can this teacher help me? And do I want to work with this teacher? Look at your content from that lens of your potential students, and you'll be able to see what, what am I missing? What am I missing? Where do I need to, where do I need to like pick up the slack? And you'll be able to have the answer there. But that's also like how you're going to, how I'm going to make content creation fun again. It's by being loose, by being carefree about whether my content is perfect or not. Like this is exactly like proof of that. I was literally writing my, like I finished my content in like half an hour today, but then I just had a spark and I was just like, I want to make this video. So this video is like completely on a whim, completely spontaneous, but I wanted to share my lessons that I've been learning that I've been sharing with my, with my paid clients that I want to share with you all now, everyone in this community. So would love to know though, last thing, comment your biggest takeaways from this training here. I'd love to know uh, your biggest takeaways. If you've got any questions, what your beliefs are too. If you want to share, hey, what are your polarizing beliefs that you can start to preach about in your content? Would love to know that as well as I can, I can be able to share like if I believe like that's, that's good to share or not at all, but it's up to you. Again, take that imperfect action. I hope this video has inspired you. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.